Welcome to Star Trek, the next generation of role-playing. What's up, Internet? Jay here with Nerd Rage Against the Machine, and today we're going to go further into the Star Trek role-playing game review series. Uh, this time we're going to hit up Last Unicorn's attempt at a Star Trek role-playing game, which was started with Star Trek The Next Generation, the role-playing game. Now, much like I talked about with Star Wars and anyone who's familiar with World of Darkness, Last Unicorn's approach, marketing-wise, was to sell multiple RPGs, including this is the classic Star Trek. There's also a Deep Space Nine, which I have in storage and didn't really want to try to drag out right now. Sorry. But uh, much the same way that, say, like, like I said, uh, if you look at World of Darkness, you have, like, Vampire, Werewolf, Mage, Wraith, and Changeling, and then several others. Uh, White... Uh, White Wolf kind of set the standard. Um, Star Wars uses it as well with Force and Destiny, Age of Rebellion, Edge of Empire. And before Star Wars would use it, uh, Last Unicorn would try that technique with Star Trek. Now, the problem with that, in this case, is in the, in the case of Vampire or World of Darkness, it works because you can really use those books as supplements while playing a specific game. Like, my werewolf campaign, I need to make a vampire. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a Tremere based on the core rulebook as opposed to just the generic vampire in the back of the book. Um, so the books work together as supplements, but also that one core book is perfect for you. Um, same thing with Star Wars. I can, and, and there's always that chance of crossplay: the one werewolf and the vampire game, the one mage and the werewolf game, what have you. In this case, um, they based each game on a separate show. There were supposed to be four games in total. Uh, one was going to be, and the first one was Star Trek Next Generation, the next one was Star Trek Classic, then Deep Space Nine, and then Voyager. So with Star Trek Next Generation to Star Trek Classic, it works on time level, i.e. this is set in the 24th century, this one is set in the 23rd. So that you have that kind of, you know, Klingons are still bad guys, what's a replicator mentality here, that of course, you know, Klingons are our friends, and, and, and we definitely know what a replicator is by this time frame. Deep Space Nine kind of goes into a different direction, which I like, which is the idea of um, being the, um, the non-Federation game, i.e. we want to play Star Trek in the vein of Firefly, which I think is a great idea. Um, also, of course, each game adds specific species and material for its world. So, for example... There's a lot more information on Cardassians in Deep Space Nine, obviously. There's a lot more information on Ferengi in TNG, um, as well as Borg. Um, or as classic, you know, of course, the enemies are Klingons. And also, this goes with playable races. Betazoids are here. Bajorans are in Deep Space Nine. Uh, Tabrillians are in this book as well. But they are all intercompatible. It works, but I don't think it was quite as elegant as, um, as the Star Wars or the World of Darkness concept. Now... To that end, um, the, th the fourth game never came out, which would have been Voyager, which would have, again, put the RPG in that, um, in that Delta Quadrant area so that we would have, you know, stuff on the Kazon, stuff on all the species and the Vidians and things that were in Voyager. Unfortunately, Last Unicorn got bought out by Wizards of the Coast, um, riding high on their D20 third ed uh, scene. They bought the company because... Last Unicorn had the rights to Star Trek as well as the rights to Dune. Um, Dune didn't even really get out. It had a limited release at Gen Con before the entire project was shelved. There was talk they wanted to do these as D20 games, but um, Paramount uh, and uh, the Herbert Foundation both yanked their licenses effectively. That's At least that's a story I've heard. Correct me if I'm wrong in the, in the, in the comments below. The system, I gotta say, while it's a good system, this is definitely a product of its era. This was produced in the 90s, right around the time that that uh, DS9 and, and Voyager were pretty hot, and also right around the time that like, White Wolf and Shadowrun were probably the two big games that weren't D&D. &D. Uh, like I said, 
Third Ed had just come out, and there was some excitement about that as well, but, you know, very much this, this has a 90s RPG vibe. Um, character creation is pretty simple in all games. It is a um, template-based system. You start with, like, you know, what species and, and you're going to be, and then, you know, what your home world is like, what your, you know, cadet life was like, and, and you build onto those to build your character. Uh, Rules-wise, this is a... Um, it uses a lot of branching um, stats, like one stat becomes two stats, um, you know, to, to specify things. The other big thing is it's a dice pool system. So when you're rolling, it's a, a, a task. You're going to roll as many dice as you have attribute, and then you're going to add the highest skill that affects that attempt. So, like, for example, you'd roll, you know, like, say, if you have a dex of three, you'd roll three dice, and then you'd add your phaser if you're going to phaser something. Um, this total versus the difficulty is, is whether you hit or not. Um, on top of that, uh, combat used a, a tiered wound system, very similar to Legend of the Five Rings, very similar to World of Darkness in its day. Um, it's a good system. It's a solid system, don't get me wrong. But it definitely is a product of its era, as much as, say, the FOSTA Star Trek RPG. You know, if, if, you're, if you didn't play FOSTA in the day... You know, if you have no nostalgia for it, you might look at it and go, it's really clunky. It's this old, blah, you know, percentile-based system for that very reason. And again, I'm I'm not here to judge. I enjoy Foss's RPG, but then again, I remember playing it back in the day. This game has a similar feel of this was a product of the 90s, very much a product of the 90s. Um, the system is actually called the Icon System and was originally, I believe, used for the game Aria which was Last Unicorn's first big game, and then was also to be ported to Dune. Um, again, with the rumor at the time being that Dune would then see a D20 release after this limited release, because when Last Unicorn was bought by Wizards of the Coast, they were literally like, you know, hours away from print, or they'd already printed the, the, the run of them up, or something along those lines. It was, you know, it was one of those, where, why should we waste all this material and, and you know, and such so they they did have a batch run and i've read the book for dune it was decent um i'm not going to really review it here um but it, it's going for about 300 dollars because of how rare it is uh easily and this game by comparison is is not as rare um and again they did multiple supplements as well there is a romulan box set there was a uh but, uh, Starfleet box, uh, Starfleet Academy box set, as well as supplements for the Vulcans, supplements for the Andorians, and a small run of miniatures. They were planning more miniatures. They did like an away team with Worf and then some generic uh, Starfleet uniforms. Again, they were definitely on their way somewhere, but I think that, again, they kind of got kneecapped because of that buyout by Wizards of the Coast. Mechanically, it's a good game. I would say a 4 out of 5. Um, it definitely has its moments, and like I said, as far as, you know, the art in these are gorgeous. It is mostly photography from the show uh, with some original artwork. Um, the Starship Combat System is okay. Um, it is an extended RPG system. Again, nothing to write home about, but, you know, again, certainly a solid game. Um, as I said, I would give this 4 out of 5. Uh, it is definitely worth looking into if you like those 90s style role playing games if you're nostalgic for games like the original World of Darkness or if you like games like Shadowrun's mechanics those kind of mechanics this is going to feel very similar and um, unlike the previous versions of Star Trek this one does have the benefit of hitting most of the big moments and what I mean by that is Unlike a game like Dungeons and Dragons, where the lore can stay the same from edition to edition, as the shows were evolving, the lore that the artists had to make up in the original games, they had to literally make up. So, like, heritage models, when they did theirs, you know, there was very little material to go on. They, they didn't even know there was going to be movies, for, for crying out loud. Um, by Foss's time, you know, we had movies, but... TNG was just starting and their last products were like the first season of TNG and therefore very you know scattered in what they could do and, and a lot of it was you know quick let's make something up and throw it in the book in hopes that that it'll work um, this time around this is really the first game where we see a good solid amount of material because by the time TNG had come out um, the TNG one which was the first of them the show was either wrapped or just wrapping ds9 was popular and uh again voyager was on the horizon so 
there was at least enough material here that you had, you know, the Adair Dex class Romulan cruiser. You knew where the Klingons were. You had, you know, all the wealth of material that you had from TNG and DS9, more or less available to you in these books. It wasn't as um, as let's hope, let's make up stuff and hope for the best as the previous two games. Um, so for that end, I would definitely say it's worth worth a look especially if you're looking for a more modern approach to star trek um it it's not my favorite and i will get into that as i go on there's two more uh star trek rpgs to review in this series but uh, in the meantime you know if you have questions about this or or, or want to wax nostalgic about your your fun with the star trek rpg star trek next generation rpg line the icon series from um last unicorn hey leave some comments below and 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 uh Always happy to discuss it. In the meantime, I bid you adieu and happy gaming.